Welcome to another edition of Inside Medicine. I'm your host, Doug Geinzer, the CEO of Las Vegas Heels, and we're here in the studio today with Paul Umbach of Trip Umbach and Dr. Mark Penn, who you've seen on the show many times before, the founding dean of the Roseman University College of Medicine. We're going to talk a little bit about an event that we just exited. Uh, for those of you that are new to Inside Medicine, we broadcast live here in the studio, typically on Thursdays at 10 o'clock. Today, we've got a special edition for you, so stay tuned. If you do happen to miss this, you're going to be able to catch it on YouTube, on, let's get this, iTunes, Roku, Stitchu, Stitcher, Spotify, and of course, you can always go to LasVegasHeels.org and catch a copy of it later. Uh, we like to bring in the leaders and innovators of healthcare here in Southern Nevada, those that are doing good things to advance medicine, deliver better quality care to our population, and today we're going to talk a little bit about academic medicine and what's going on in that world with Roseman University. Gentlemen, welcome to the studio. Thank nice you. to be here. Thank Good to see everybody. And 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 Paul, you're uh, from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, my own hometown, and where we both have some roots. <laughs> yep, it's a it's a great place. It's nice to uh, meet up with you. And thanks for inviting us today. Yeah. So before we get started, tell our audience, primarily provider base, those people that uh, uh, are interested in improving the quality of health in Southern Nevada, but we're kind of a little bit of an echo chamber. Many may or may not be familiar with Trepumbach. So if you could take a few minutes, tell us a little bit about the Trepumbach and the type of work that you do. All right. Thank you, Doug. And Mark, nice to mm -hmm. be here with Same you here. as well. Trepumbach started about 30 years ago in Pittsburgh, but we're in all 50 states and we've been able to do several thousand projects around the country, and we're uh, experts in uh, academic medicine. Uh, we've developed most of the new medical schools in the country. We also work in community health, and we also work in economic uh, design, which is sort of like the economic impact of health. And those three things come together where medical schools, uh, which is a, a big part of our practice, are really about community health, mm -hmm. and they're about economic development, and they're about innovation. So all the things that Trip Umbach works on kind of comes together in our medical school practice. And obviously, healthcare ties so closely to economic development. You can't have one without the other. So it's uh, it's important. And you've this is not your first uh, run in Las Vegas. We uh, met each other what five years ago, maybe six years ago. Right. We had worked with uh, folks that were starting the UNLV School of Medicine. We had worked with the Lindsay Institute. We did a project with the uh, Board of Regents and and had a statewide uh, program for advancing medical education. And we're working now with uh, Roseman College of Medicine and Roseman University really to take that message further <laughs> to say that even though a medical school has started and Toro uh, the uh, osteopathic school had been here for many years, there's still a need and there's so much more to be done. And uh, Roseman's college uh, plans are right at the cusp of, uh, of getting implemented. And so we're here really on this uh, visit and in this engagement to see if we can really get more energy around medical education and the economic impact is a big part of what we study. Perfect. And Dr. Penn, you're not you're mm -hmm. you're not new to the show. You've been on several times. We're a huge supporter of the Roseman uh, University College of Medicine. But for viewers that are just joining us, or folks that may not be aware, give us a high level of Roseman University and specifically the College of Medicine. Well, thank you, Doug. And first of all, thank you for allowing us to come and be a part of this program. It's been, it's been great to have the outreach into the community, so they get to know a lot of these issues that you talk about. And thank you, Paul, for also being here. Appreciate you coming. Um, Roseman University, just by background, is a very, very strong health professions university right now. <clears throat> it started out of need for pharmacy and was uh, built around the need of pharmacy and into a college of pharmacy in 1999. From 1999 uh, onward, they were able to add not only pharmacy, they added nursing as well as a dental school. They also do some residencies in uh, dental training like orthodontics and also they've just added a general dentistry dentistry program they also have an mba program uh, that is focused on the healthcare professions so they've added all those together they have uh, say a campus up in south jordan U utah but they started in uh, henderson here in nevada so they're born in nevada <clears throat> and what they wanted to do a few years ago is to kind of expand into the need of medicine and so as they began to look, meaning the board and our president, as well as the leadership, 
uh, began to identify there's just no question there's a great need here in Nevada, and so they want to bring on a college of medicine. So we've been working about four to five years now trying to bring this uh, College of Medicine to fruition. Uh, That may be a little bit different than what Paul has been used to where he comes in probably at the very, very beginning. Uh, We began and we started a process and we've laid a lot of foundation with the College of Medicine with a lot of community engagement, service activities, and we've also added a clinical practice not too long ago. So those things are very, very important in laying a foundation as far as that community connection and then kind of moving forward together. Yeah. And they're well on their way. Uh, <clears throat> as we've worked with new medical schools all over the country, I think we've had 30 experiences. Roseman has all the pieces in place, including a faculty practice, uh, been involved with graduate medical education. They have a university uh, infrastructure to build from. Uh, they're close to being able to launch, and it's really exciting to see all the work that's been done, their facilities, their infrastructure, um, and a lot of community support. We just recently uh, did a project where we interviewed people from uh, throughout the community. And at the presentation just today, uh, we had representatives from the other medical schools there. We had representatives from the Board of Regions, from government, from health systems. And there wasn't a person in the room that wasn't very, very supportive and excited about getting this uh, new medical school off the ground. I'm going to take a line that uh, I'm not sure which one of you provided at the the release this morning, but it was, um, this is different because it's a medical school that is growing out of a health sciences university. Mm-hmm. So 80% of that infrastructure already exists, and that's what makes Roseman different. Mm-hmm. Can you expand upon that? Because that, I think that was very important for the, the audience to hear this morning. Well, Mark, why don't you go ahead? Well, I can I can start by saying that uh, we're in situations where uh, someone has an idea uh, to have a medical school or a university that's never had any experience in health science. Well, the faculty and the student body and the relationships, you know, health science university already has relationships with health systems and hospitals. And whether it's a pharmacist or a nurse or a dentist, they already have those relationships. And when you're working with a college or a university that doesn't have any relationships, Mm -hmm. you have to build everything from the ground up. And then you also have to create the culture within the institution about care and about health care uh, and biological and health science. Well, those things are already in place. So there's no other university in Southern uh, Nevada that would be in a position to start a medical school, a private medical school. Uh, and Roseman's the one that will be doing that. Dr. Penn, it's, and I always like to comment on this. Roseman, the Roseman campus has the finest set of assets in town. Mm-hmm. It's the, We're blessed to be a a tenant uh, at Roseman, but my gosh, those buildings are spectacular. And what you have there is amazing. But the relationships that you've built throughout the valley over the course of the last 20 years is Mm -hmm. uh, remarkable. Absolutely. And I think that gets into what kind of assets are in place. Um, You know, we talk about the relationships. We talk about the fact that Roseman has these other colleges with other faculty members that you can Uh, work with and they had these relationships already built and then of course we come on we have to build relationships that matter to medicine sometimes they're the same sometimes they're a little bit different and then when you talk about the buildings um, those are phenomenal Um, you know it's one of those things that it's uh, it's not always easy to walk into a place that has those type of buildings in order to build a college of medicine around it in a sense Um, We have one building, it's called the, the uh, Engelstadt Research Building. Um, and that building was one of the first buildings, of course, that we acquired. And that's where our College of Medicine is actually going to be located. That's where our educational program will be. We'll be doing premier research because we have 24 just phenomenal laboratories there. And then the basement, we're going to be putting in our uh, simulation lab, as well as we're going to be putting in an anatomy lab there with cadavers and so forth. So when you talk about building a medical school, probably one of the biggest uh, costs is going to be your, your physical facilities. Uh, we have physical facilities, but we're going to also need to build out. So that's one thing I would remind our, our viewers is that, you know, we don't have everything in place yet, 
But there is a certain amount of dollars that we need, of course, and we're going to need to put toward the building out of our classrooms, the things I just mentioned in our basement and so forth. So, but it's, it's very unusual to have that to, you know, when you're walking in the door to say, here we have this, build it from this kind of a standpoint. Mm -hmm. And just so people know, it's about $1 uh, for every dollar that you put into the building is another dollar or more sometimes that has to go inside. And it's the technology, the labs, the simulation suites, just those um, simulation um, mannequins alone can cost hundreds of thousands of dollars. The IT alone can be millions of dollars. Mm -hmm. So a medical school is one of the most expensive and most technologically advanced um, buildings you can build. So, uh, so when you look at it from the outside, you might say, oh, they have their medical school building up, but um, more dollars are needed on the inside. So this morning, you brought together some of the most major leaders of this community. Mm -hmm. I looked around that room and you had the likes of Shelley Berkeley. You had the likes of Don Snyder, mm -hmm. uh, just a hundred of the top leadership of Las Vegas. Uh, what were you hoping to accomplish? And clearly I think you accomplished bringing the right people into the room. Uh, but talk to us a little bit about this morning uh, and what you wanted to lead or provide to those uh, leaders. Well, one of the major things in partnership with Trip Umbach, it was a matter of, first of all, evaluating where we are uh, and can we move to the future and what are the recommendations moving forward? So one of the questions is, is of course, um, do we have what we need in order to move forward? And if we don't, then how do we meet those needs? Above it all, do we need another medical school? And, you know, I wanted to have that answer coming from an external expert, and Paul was able to provide that information. Second of all, in my mind, it was, what about Roseman? Is it the right university with what we've been talking about to lay that foundation for medical school? And then do we have the right team from the College of Medicine to kind of move this forward? Um, then the other part of this is economic impact, to kind of speak to that issue as well. So I was hopeful, to your question, to understand that better from his perspective as an expert. But the other just that I would just summarize, um, that I was hopeful to get out of this, because I was hopeful that the answers were going to be yes. This is the right medical school. This is the right university. This is the right location, all those things. <clears throat> and if it was, my point being is, I wanted it to be an encouragement. The word I would say is an encouragement to our university to stay the course, to our college of medicine to stay the course as far as continue to, to do the hard work to get this off the ground. And it's also an encouragement to our community because one of the issues when you go through processes like this, bring on the medical schools we talked about in the meeting today, it's very complex and it's also very expensive. And sometimes you get there quickly, depending on your resources, sometimes it takes a while. Yeah. So it's very important along the way to have moments where you have celebration or that you have encouragement and just you have that persistence and patience that's gotta be there as well. So that's what I was hoping to take away today and I really felt it strongly that the community support was there getting to your point. It was just wonderful to see these mm -hmm. people. And one last thing that I would say is, is that when I entered, entered the auditorium and I looked at the, the group, I, I just and I made this comment. When I first came here five years ago, I didn't know pretty much anybody in that room. But since then, I know pr pretty much all those people in that room. And it's just heartwarming to me to know them, to know that they came to support this process. They took of their time to listen to this story. So, mm -hmm. Yeah, I felt the same way. And I've been in uh, <clears throat> situations uh, where it hasn't felt like that in the room. And I've been in other communities where it's been really a, a, a struggle and there's a lot of dissension. Uh, I've been in communities where other medical schools wouldn't have come to the uh, presentation. I've been in communities where we'd had people from other medical schools come and disrupt the, the presentation. Uh, it's great to see this um, spirit of oneness and collaboration, and it's needed because without that, there's no way that Southern Nevada will ever be able to have the physicians and the quality of health care and the economic development that comes from health and higher education unless it was a team effort. And to see the deans from the other schools and leadership, uh, that's unique. And I think that that's something that we need to underscore for your 
viewers and listeners that there is a collaborative spirit around healthcare. And I want to give a compliment to Las Vegas Heels because without mm -hmm. that infrastructure and without you folks being that glue and that cheerleader for the region, uh, I don't think that that would have happened. And uh, so your organization being part of the ecosystem as maybe an encourager in the ecosystem is very important as well. Thank you for that compliment. Let's touch on a couple of the points uh, from the presentation this morning, and I'm going to have the group bring up some slides, and we're not going to do the whole presentation, but we picked out a couple that seem to really make a little bit of sense. Let's look at Nevada's health rankings. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a little scary. Uh, we aren't where we want to be, uh, and obviously bringing on another medical school will help us get to where we should be. Mm -hmm. um, so let's touch a little bit about on this, Paul. Well, I think that what you find when you look at uh, community health and health status, uh, Nevada, like so many states, have uh, quite a disparity. Uh, the folks that are unhealthy are exceptionally unhealthy, and the folks that are healthy are exceptionally healthy. And income, um, race, uh, culture, uh, so many things that, that pull communities and people apart uh, leave very vulnerable populations. And the sad thing here in Nevada over time has been that those with means and with uh, access to transportation and, and dollars can leave and go to other places. But those who can't uh, and the underserved populations really look to this healthcare system and this community for those needs. And that's where really the rubber meets the road and the need for higher quality and, and stronger um, medical education and, and health and, um, health reform. But what you find is that so much of it is based on just numbers, mm -hmm. number of primary care physicians, uh, public health funding, the, the amount of resources that go into uh, public health. Uh, just nowhere, no way that you could ever climb that mountain unless the community would work together and, and start addressing this as a community and not as each individual hospital or provider trying to take that on. A lot of people don't realize what all is involved in building um, academic medicine, what the medical education pipeline really looks like. It's mm -hmm. not like we say, hey, we need more doctors and tomorrow we're going to have more doctors. The process takes a while. We've spent a lot of time building some infrastructure uh, in Nevada. Uh, Dr. Penn, you and I worked very hard on the GME expansion, and I think we're all starting to see some of the, the fruits of that effort. Uh, but talk to us a little bit about uh, the pipeline and where we are and why this is important. Well, medicine is one of those disciplines where research shows that around seventh grade or even fifth grade uh, is when folks start to be interested in maybe becoming a doctor. But at seventh grade or fifth grade, if they don't start getting into a curriculum in grade school or middle school or junior high that gets them directed towards science, basic science and, and math and, and what we call STEM, the, all those different uh, things. And let's say they don't get into that at that point, their chance of going to an undergraduate college, either community college or four-year college, and be successful in the basic biological and other sciences. And then at that point, they have to apply for medical school and not just to pass the uh, a test, but they have to have the resume that they're going to be successful in medical school. So we lose so many uh, folks along the way that never even go to college and then we lose so many more that would never be able to go from college into medical school. And that's not even the end of the story, because once they're in medical school for four years, they still have to complete a residency. And if they go far away for that residency, if they take that residency in Ohio or Pennsylvania or, or Florida, their chance of staying where they do their residency in that phase four uh, really predicts the most on where they're going to be. So if we back that up, what do we do? Well, we have to identify the young people, and I would say folks from different um, minority and, and, and underserved populations particularly, because that's where the need really is. 
um, the the underserved population will be better served by folks that uh, represent their community. So then we have to say, what are we doing for seventh graders? And can we have a program through the medical school that goes into the schools and gets them ready? Can there be a health science high school or junior high like there are around the country? In fact, there are several medical schools that have health science high schools. I'm working in Compton in, um, in Los Angeles County and Martin Luther King Hospital Health Center. And there's also a King uh, Prep High School right on the campus of Charles Drew University of Health Science, which is a similar university to, to Roseman. And they're already working on this. And then after medical school, we have to create, and you had mentioned that you and Mark had been working on uh, graduate medical education development without residencies in the community. The chance for these folks to stay is very, very low, but we can actually turn that around and create a pipeline that puts medical students from the region with now three medical schools in, in the region with Toro and UNLV and now Roseman into these residencies and then into practice. And now you got something really special because that engine, once it starts, every year residents come out. Every year they go into practice. Mm -hmm. And you could start seeing 50 new physicians a year or more, maybe 100 physicians a year in a factory of physicians that know Southern Nevada, that love this community, that have agreed to spend their career in this community. And that's so different than what you have now with so many physicians coming and going uh, into the market and then out of the market. They're not from the market. Um, and, and that affects quality of care. So if you have different physicians, every time you go to the doctor, uh, your care quality goes down so much. And if you are in a situation where you can't even find a doctor, well, now what's your doctor? The emergency room, uh, an ambulance that you call to come to your house. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so an upward spiral through that pipeline is so important. I think a great statistic, and then we're going to jump over to Roseman, that I saw was uh, – Nevada ranks number nine in terms of retention from UME, undergraduate medical education, through GME. So if we build that pipeline right, and it mm -hmm. sounds like we're already doing it, but we just need to strengthen the or widen it a little bit. And let's talk about the role that Roseman uh, is going to play in this expansion. So let me bounce off a little bit of what we were just talking about and then build to that. Um, about three or four years ago, uh, data that looks at the people that are applying to medical school across the country, and we're talking about now from Nevada, students from Nevada that applied to medical school was somewhere around 240 students, 240. One-third of them got into medical school somewhere. Two-thirds did not. So the point is to underscore, we need to do a better job. But first of all, we need more students that are interested in medicine, right? Yeah. We, we will continue with our medical schools as we expand. We will have more seats that we can offer to the students here that say, hey, you know, I see that as an opportunity here. Maybe I want to apply and so forth. With UNLV coming on, uh, that number now is over 300 is my point. Yeah. That number is still way too low when you kind of look at, you know, our population growth over time. So what Roseman has been doing, the College of Medicine in particular, just to kind of underscore, is that you had the word uh, pipeline up there, is that while we're working toward our accreditation process, my team has really, really gotten into the community with community engagement activities, as we would call them. And one of those activities basically is broken down into the first part of the pipeline that you're talking about. We have reached down into the elementary, the junior high, and the high schools around us and provided programming to kind of introduce the concept of medicine to those students. And so we're able to do it with some of the private medical schools. Uh, we're now able to work with some of the public schools, which is great because we really want to have a, a bigger outreach. But we want to grow the interest on the part of the students as well as the parents. And so we introduced... Uh, students to maybe come for a full day and they learn about what it takes to become a physician as an example. Uh, and so it's really been very positive as far as across the community when we've done those type of programs. So that's one of the things that we really need to do moving forward. The other part of the equation, we're building a curriculum that's built around driving the student into the community more to understand the community. 
we, we have a LENS program, which is a longitudinal experience in neighborhood service. And what that is is that students from their very first year are going to be planted into communities, and they'll go to like a, a place where they're seeing patients. But as opposed to most traditional type of teaching, they won't just go there and just see the patients and go home and do nothing with it. They have to do that part, learn how to run the practice in a sense. They're going to learn the front office, the back office of that practice. But then they have to learn about the community. It'll be like about a mile radius around that, that clinic. They're going to be uh, challenged with what's going on in that community. What are, what are the health problems within that community? What's the access issues around that community? And so we're going to be kind of looking at the idea of, and, and the underserved, for example, will be a real big part of that because we really need to build and bridge that part. The other thing I would just add, just to add it, it to the, the other part, because it's the pipeline before, it's during medical school, and it's after medical school. The GME part, we've already, as you, you and I have done, and we have been a part of, and I really appreciate your efforts, working on the GME, working with the other medical schools to bring on more GME, because we really need a lot more. Those kind of things are very important, necessary. Mm -hmm. I want to spend a little time about the economic impact of the College of Medicine and what that looks like. It's... Uh, it's an economic driver. It's not just building a medical school. There's an impact. The entire community benefits from that. So let's, if you could spend a little bit of time telling us uh, about that, Paul. Well, for really the whole 30 years of our uh, company, we've been on the forefront of measuring the economic impact of uh, medical schools and universities and hospitals. And, and what we found is, as we've gone further down the road, it's not just the school itself. The school will have about a half a billion dollar economic impact, just the school, just the medical school. And then you have all the other components and pieces that come out, the research, the commercialization, the uh, healthcare um, industry growth. And in, in uh, Southern Nevada, you can have a multi-billion dollar impact just by keeping care in the state that leaves the state every year. But then, even beyond the medical school and all those other things that come out of the economic impact, we have the impact of physicians that are trained and stay in the community. We have the impact of graduate medical education. We have the impact of cost savings when folks get better care and are able to get care more appropriately. So in Mark's example of putting the physicians out in the community, they're going to be actually helping save health care costs because folks that interface with those students will be less likely to go to the emergency room for care. They'll be more likely to have access to a doctor. They'll be more likely to get onto a care plan where uh, the cost of care is so much lower. So there's an enormous amount of pieces of the economic impact. So in a project like this, it's easy to say that in 20 years, in 2040, uh, directly and indirectly, the school and everything that it touches will have about a $1 billion economic impact on Southern Nevada. That's probably overly conservative. It could be much higher. Uh, let's say that this um, medical school helps improve health and health status even more than we thought. Well, it's easy to come up with some very big numbers when people have their utilization of health care go down, and even more so when they become more healthy and more productive. And the best economic development thing you can do is be healthy yourself. Mm -hmm. And in fact, I read just recently that walking and walkability is a new economic development indicator. So if we can show that people are walking and more active, that is an economic indicator for a community. And that's not even measured in my, my chart. Gentlemen, I hate to say this, our show's coming to an end. We mm -hmm. barely touched on a lot, which... The good part is we're going to have to have you back on the show. Okay. Um, when is this report going to come out? And maybe we could coordinate it mm -hmm. to have you back on the show when the report comes out. When is this report going to be out there for the public to see? In July, we'll have the public report. And maybe sometime in July would be nice to come back. I know it will be hot, but, uh, <laughs> but at least it's a drive. But we could walk here. <laughs> but, but we'll walk here. All right, but Doug, thank you very much. Yeah, thank, thank you, you both it. for thank being you. on the show. Um, and I look forward to having you back, and I look forward to being able to release this report out there because we all know that we need another medical school here in town. Yes. And you have the full community support 
Uh, I know you know you've got Las Vegas Heel support, and we look forward to having you back in a few weeks. Uh, for those of you that uh, joined us a little bit late, we look forward to uh, seeing you on the show next week and sometime in July when we have uh, Paul Umbach and uh, Dr. Mark Penn back on the show. Great. Thank you, and you all have a great day today.